shaped or round polys? That's today's question and my hypothesis that I'm gonna share with you today. If you've been following my channel for the past seven months, you probably know already that I do a lot of string reviews. I like the nuance using my process. And if you're not familiar with my process, it's pretty simple. I use head gravity MPLs that are customized and I use them for every string review that I do. And these are the same swing weight and they use the same tension. So not only are the rackets the same every time, the tension is the same every time, and I'm always going back and forth between the two rackets. So I like to remove the variables as much as possible and have as much control over the processes. Because if I were testing a racket one day and another set of strings the next day, depending on the weather conditions or how I felt or any other variables, I could get a different feeling from the particular strings. Not only that, we all have our biases. And if we're using a certain string and we hear about the next great string and we think that there's something better, we have a natural bias when we start playing with a new string to believe that that string is better. And this video is not just to my audience, but it's also a message to uh, Jonas at The Tennis Nerd and Nicola at Intuitive Tennis, Beckett at Tencom. Let's talk about shaped polys for a minute. I think it's pretty clear to most of us, when you talk about shaped poly, like a four or five sided poly, maybe even a six sided poly, they tend to be sharper than let's say an eight sided poly or a round poly that's rough. So the, for the sake of this argument today, we're just gonna have two buckets. We're gonna have the bucket that's a shaped poly. We're really talking about four and five sided shaped polys, maybe six sided shaped polys. And then another bucket which is the round polys, which is anything that's purely round or even eight-sided. If you're stringing an eight-sided poly, you know it's basically just round. There's really not much to it. It's no real different than if it's a textured string like Alu Power Rough, which is also a round string. As I've been doing these string reviews, for some reason I kept finding myself liking or enjoying round polys. And I figured, well, I'm just a round poly guy. I like round polys. And then I thought to myself, what does that actually mean? What am I feeling? I can't just be a round poly guy. There's gotta be a reason for that. And it started to occur to me, especially when I started playing last week with my normal Super Smash, which thanks to Nicola into a tennis for turning me onto the string two years ago. Um, it's still one of my favorite strings today. Nicola and I have very similar beliefs in string and actually racket setups as well, but that's for another time. So, so I was going back and forth between these rackets and something hit me as I was playing with them is that while this felt really good, I felt like I had to concentrate a little bit harder. And I've had that same feeling when I've played with other four or five and to a lesser extent, six sided polys, where when I play with a round poly, not just with Super Smash, but any other round poly, I get a sensation of a little bit more comfort and consistency. And I was trying to reconcile that and it hit me. Um, and it came down to accuracy. So if you've seen my graphs before and I talk about control a lot, I'm gonna change that to accuracy because I think accuracy is a better way to talk about this. How, can strings have differences in accuracy? For the most part, your racket and your string pattern determine the accuracy of the ball when it's hit and when it lands. But the question becomes, do strings play a role in accuracy? And of course they do, right? Because you wouldn't be using polys. Polys are much more accurate than even guts or synthetic guts or multi-filaments. So there's no doubt that strings have a role to play in control and accuracy. So I'm not arguing with that at all. But I'm talking about relative accuracy when it comes to any good quality poly. Is there really a difference in accuracy? And for the most part, I don't think so. I think the variables by your racket and string pattern are far more important for accuracy than the string that you're using. With one caveat, when I said I was concentrating more with this, I realized we're not talking about lateral accuracy left to right. We're talking about trajectory and depth or lack of depth of shots. And something that's become more and more clear and why I think I was always more comfortable with a round poly versus a shape poly is for some reason I didn't have to concentrate quite as hard or be quite as committed and I felt more consistency in the accuracy with a round poly than a square poly. Now you might be thinking, well, there's not that much difference in accuracy. And you're right, we're again, we're talking about nuanced degrees of accuracy. But I think the biggest issue I find is when I miss hit a ball or don't hit it perfectly with a shape poly, I either drop the ball too soon 
or it flies too long. Depends if it grips right and it has extra RPMs and it drops a little shorter than I thought it would compared to a round poly, or if I didn't catch it right and it ends up sailing longer. And that's the trajectory or the accuracy I'm talking about. So it's not lateral accuracy. I think there's a depth of accuracy or a trajectory of accuracy difference. So if instead of a point being round when I'm hitting into, let's say if I can hit into a a uh, five foot radius of a circle on a particular shot, I'm thinking that it's now elongated when I use the shape poly because the trajectory accuracy is a little bit less. So that's my hypothesis and I slept on it for several nights and I kept wondering, am I right? And then something hit me. Let's look up the Tennis Nerd website and Jonas because Jonas does a lot of reviews and he knows a lot of stringers that string for the ATP professionals. How many ATP pros are using shaped polys? And to my memory, not many. Whether it's Djokovic or Sinner or Alcaraz or Nadal or Federer or really any of the top pros, they all use round polys or so I thought. So I checked on Tennis Nerd's website and all of his research and it's true. There are very few top professionals that are using a four or five sided shaped poly. And one other thing that you can think about, if the pros are using mostly round polys, you would think that everybody wants more spin if there are no drawbacks. So if there's only benefits but no drawbacks, why wouldn't you want to take a string that's a little sharper, that can generate a little bit more RPM than a round poly? Because you'd want that extra kick and bounce to throw off your opponent if it was possible. So my thinking, there are some drawbacks, and that drawback is the consistency of its trajectory and the consistency of your depth of shot is a little bit harder to maintain with a shaped poly than it is with a round poly. Now, if that's true for pros, you could argue, well, maybe it's not true for recreational players, or maybe it's more true for recreational players. Well, I think it's more true for recreational players, and here's why. Pros can hit their stroke very committed and consistently every time. Recreational players, whether it's 5-0, 4-5, 4-0, as you go downwards, you get less consistent with your commitment and your strokes. And that's where I think the chasm gets even larger between shape polys and round polys. So if you have a trajectory issue, even if it's very slight at a very high level, I think that that gets magnified the lower level that you go. And I notice it even in my game that sometimes with these shape polys, the trajectory and the depth of control is less on certain shots. Again, if I hit the shot just perfectly, I don't really see any difference. Maybe there's actually benefits for the shape poly, but I don't hit the ball perfectly every time anymore, not by a long shot. So I'm finding round polys to be more comfortable. And it doesn't matter if whether it was this comparison between Hyper G and Super Smash, or if it was Wasabi, which is a four-sided string by Toraline, or if it was Torabyte, or if it was Solinco Confidential that I've used in the past, or even Super Toro, which is a Toraline Super Toro, which is a six-sided string, which I like a lot. It's one of my favorite strings. I sensed it a little bit on that string, but because it's six-sided, sort of on that borderline, is it really round? Does it really do much when it's six-sided? I think a little bit, but less so. With, and I'm starting to get to a point where I'm about 95% confident that this assessment between shape polys and round polys is becoming more clear to me. And because I do so much playtesting, I can feel those nuances more and more each and every day in the more I do this. So that's my thoughts on shape polys versus round polys. I'm a round poly guy. That makes no sense. There has to be a reason behind it. And I think I just explained that reason. I hope I explained it well. I'd love to know your thoughts. And again, Jonas from Tennis Nerd, Nicola from Into a Tennis, and Beckett from Tencom or any other influencer. If you have thoughts on this subject, I would love to talk about it. But tell me if I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next days.